Hey, violin people, how are we doing? Um, I got a couple things I want to throw at you this week, and um, a couple other things that you can be doing just kind of for review. Were we in class right now, we would probably be spending a fair bit of our class just kind of going over songs we've already learned and making sure that we're ready to play them as an ensemble. And the best thing that you can do uh, for home practice for that is just make sure you know it super well. Playing something by yourself is not exactly the same as playing it with a group of people because if you're playing it by yourself, you can pause for a split second and then pick up where you left off. If you're playing it as a group, everything's got to keep moving. And sometimes that can be difficult, but the best way to make sure that you've got a hold of that is just to know it as well as you can by yourself. So you can certainly work on the open bowing stuff from pages 16 and 17, okay? Um, quick reminder with the bow, um, you guys all had a really good grip, no pun intended, on holding it, but just to remember, it's the two fingers here, the middle and the ring and the thumb go on the frog. That's really what holds up the bow, okay? And then the pointer has to go on the winding, the pinky has to go on the adjusting screw. The pointer and the pinky are basically what help you kind of control the bow. These ones just hold it in place. This is what uh, helps you to make the bow do what you want it to do. You want to remember to tighten the bow a little bit when you play, and you have to remember to loosen it when you put it away as well. Remember, we should have, if we're, if we're tightening it, yeah, excuse me, if we're tightening it up to play, it should still curve down in the middle a little bit. It should not be totally straight, and it definitely shouldn't curve up like that, okay? There should be enough room between the bow hair and the bow that you could put a finger in there. Like we said, don't, because you're not supposed to touch the bow hair. It gets the oils from your fingers on it, and over time it makes it so it doesn't make as nice a sound on the violin. As far as rosin goes, you want to make sure that you put a little bit on every time you play. Um, 30 seconds should about do it. If you do 30 seconds and your bow, you can feel it slipping and sliding on the strings, then you can put a little bit more on. And also remember, don't just put it in one tiny area. You want to put it all the way from the top to the bottom so that any part of your bow that hits the strings is able to grab on. Okay, so the other things you can work on, and if you uh, need help with them, um, I left up the videos that show you the songs on page 8 and 9. There are really four we would be focusing on right now. Uh, on page 8, we would be focusing on Morning Dance and Rolling Along. On page 9, we would be focusing on Seminal Chant and uh, Lightly Row. And again, if you need a walkthrough on those, uh, they're in the videos I put up last week and the week before, all right? So feel free to check those out and just kind of keep them fresh. And those are songs that at this point, uh, we're still just doing them pizzicato. That means the bow is down and we're starting to just pluck them with our fingers, okay? Um, what we also added in last week was on page 18, and that's the two examples I'm gonna give you today are also gonna be found on page 18. Uh, so last week we added something called Boeing G, and it was the first chance we had at combining, putting the fingers down on the neck of the violin. Remember G, we found it on the D string, which is this one right here, eek, ants, down, okay? And we had all three fingers holding down, all three fingers on all three pieces of tape. And for Boeing G, we're going to basically just follow the rhythm in front of us. It's all on second line G, so we don't have to move our fingers at all. So Boeing G is going to sound like this. And we rest. And we rest. Okay. And don't forget to follow the bow direction when we hit a rest. We're kind of freezing in place because when we start it off, we're going down, up, down, freeze, up, down, up. Unless we get that little apostrophe looking thing that um, tells us to lift the bow and kind of start with another down bow, we're always going to go the opposite direction on the, on the next note. Okay. So the ones we're adding today, we're going to start with back and forth. Okay. Now, just kind of to make sure you got a good grip on it, you can try back and forth pizzicato before we try it with the bow, arco. Um, this one is going to have G's on the second line moving down to F sharps on the uh, first space. So if you look at number 55 on page 18, back and forth, it's going to go G, 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 and then 
F sharp is that second piece of tape, so two fingers on the two pieces of tape, F sharp three times. And then in that third measure, it's gonna go G, G, F sharp, F sharp. And the last measure cause to, uh, excuse me, does kind of a quicker switcheroo there, G, F sharp, G, okay? And when we put it all together and we add the bow, it looks something like this. Now feel free to play it at your own pace. Play it whatever speed you feel good about. Okay, and your goal, you might at first kind of find that it's sounding a little bit, especially in like measure three, it's sounding a little bit like this. You're taking that second to switch. But your goal, even though you're starting out like that, is to get to the point where you can switch back and forth between G and F sharp. Remember, all you're doing is lifting the finger, okay? Lifting that ring finger, um, where you can get to the point where it just flows nice and smooth. There's no stopping between the notes. This is what the last two measures should sound like. Okay, on we go to up and down, okay? This is number 56 on page 18, and it adds E to the mix, okay? You might notice that they have done a couple things. Um, number one, they haven't changed the rhythm. It's still quarter, 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 rest, quarter, 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 rest, uh, four quarter notes, and then the same rhythm as the beginning. So for 54, 55, and 56, same rhythm, same bow direction. The only thing that's changing is the way we handle the pitches. Um, they've also, and I guess they did this in 55 as well, they took away your bow direction because not every piece of violin music is going to have every note uh, written with an up bow or a down bow marking. What they do is they kind of trust you to just go back and forth. If they don't write in what the bowing is, you should just go, if you just played a down bow, do an up bow. If you just played an up bow, do a down bow, okay? Just back and forth. And if you're not 100% sure you can do that, just look back at 54, all the bow markings are there and you can just kind of copy them, okay? So again, with down and up, you probably want to try it pizzicato the first time. We're remembering that G is on the second line and that's three fingers. F sharp is in the first space and that's two fingers. And then E is on the first line and that's one finger, okay? So here's down and up played pizzicato. We start with G, G, F sharp and we rest and then E, E, F sharp and we rest again. Next one, this is the one with all quarter notes, is going to go G, G, F sharp, F sharp. And the last measure has three different pitches in it, E, F sharp, G. Okay? You might notice when you bring the bow in that uh, the third measure is actually the exact same as the third measure in the example above. So you've already kind of got this. All right, down and up played with the bow is going to sound like this. Same deal as the last one. You might find that at first when you're trying to bow and switch between G's and F sharps and E's and all that good stuff, um, you're leaving a little space to, uh, you know, kind of process where you have to put your fingers next and what note you're going to. That's fine. But the ultimate goal is to be able to play that last measure instead of like this. We want to be able to go like this. So the sound never really goes away. It just kind of continues on. All right. Guys, that's where I'm going to leave you for this week. Have some fun with that. And um, make sure that if you missed any of the other videos, check them out. They're all about the same length, 9, 10 minutes. They shouldn't take you too long. But they go through uh, pretty much everything we would be working on to this point and refresh a couple things that we've already worked on, but we need to be able to keep from getting rusty. All right. And if you guys have any questions, your parents are more than free to email me. Um, I think they can contact me through my Google site and I will see you guys next week. Take it easy.